Dithering. Have you heard of it? No? Okay, no problem. Just listen very carefully. I don't know about you, but to my ears, this is a huge improvement. It completely gets rid of the distortion problem. And what you just heard right now is exactly how it will sound on the Reels tab playing inside the Instagram application. In fact, these two clips were the result of the tests I did on my own account. Now, I understand some people are very impatient and don't want to even try to understand anything about it and just want the quick fix right now. And in that case, you can skip to the last section of the video and get what you want. But otherwise, I'll teach you something that's very cool. So let's get started. Instagram sounds terrible, especially Reels, and I'm not even exaggerating. In fact, if you make your own music and post it to Instagram, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It completely crushes the life out of it. And you might start thinking, am I that terrible of a producer? Do I not know how to mix my own music? Because here's the thing, if you use any song in the music library that is licensed to Instagram, it sounds fine, but there's a catch. That music is not going through the same process as the audio that is inside your video. I just wanted to clear this up before I explain what's going on under the hood, because uh, yeah, it's not your terrible mixing or mastering skills, it's just the playback engine of the app. Also, the solution that I'm gonna share with you is pretty easy to implement, and there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to do it, because it has nothing to do with the settings of the Instagram application itself, or the export settings of your video, it's completely independent of these things. And that's great, because no matter what tools you're using, it will still work. I have done some videos in the past about this and made some test signals and took some measurements and discovered a few things that ruined the audio on Instagram, but I was still not satisfied because although these things are valid, they are not enough to make it sound the way it does. And it was really bugging me because I am an audio engineer. I didn't just watch some videos on YouTube, although YouTube is great, but I actually took sound engineering courses back before the pandemic started. And I was like, it shouldn't be that difficult. Why am I not able to figure out what's going on with Instagram? And I kept thinking very hard about it and it finally clicked. Remember I said a word a moment earlier, it was dithering. You don't need to know what it means right now. I'll explain it a bit later, but it's not a very common topic. A lot of music producers have even never heard of this term uh, because they don't need to. It doesn't really affect their producing process. Even mixing engineers don't really need to know about it. Although mastering engineers probably know because mastering is a bit more technical side of music and audio because you need to know where your audio will be played and optimized for that playback device. There's a very noticeable distortion on reels. I think we both agree on that. Unless you do lo-fi music, then you don't really face that distortion problem. And you'll understand later why I'm mentioning lo-fi and you'll be like, that totally makes sense. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. And I'm gonna start with a few fundamentals of audio. Don't worry, it's not gonna turn into a boring lecture, but I just want to say the bare minimum, just enough to understand what's going on. Me, speak, vocal cords, vibrate, air molecules around my face, get irritated and start hitting one another and vibrating at the same speed as my vocal cords. I'm holding a microphone, a very fancy microphone. Inside that microphone, there's a thin membrane, a very thin membrane. When these air molecules hit that membrane, it will vibrate at the same rate. And this number of vibrations per second is called the frequency. Now, this membrane is connected to a copper wire that is coiled or wrapped around a magnet. And if you remember anything from school, this is called electromagnetic induction. You don't need to remember it, but just know that if I move the membrane, this thing will create an electrical signal and we call that signal analog because it exactly represents the same intensity of vibrations that are happening in real life. So if the membrane is pushed forward, that signal has a positive value. If it's pulled backward, that signal has a negative value. If I take any point on that signal, I can measure a value. What's that value? It's the amplitude or the volume of the signal at that specific point. And we call the signal continuous 
because it has an infinite amount of points but that's the problem because computer have limited storage we cannot store an infinite amount of values on a computer so what are we gonna do about it we're gonna take some points and ignore some other points so let's say this is an interval of time I take one point I wait for that amount of time take another point wait that amount of time take another point and so on mr. Nyquist said that if we need to represent a frequency on a computer I need at least two points to represent that frequency so if I have 10 Hertz how many points do I need 20 points human ears can hear anywhere from 20 Hertz all the way up to 20,000 Hertz now that's very optimistic not a lot of people can hear all the way up to 20,000 however if we want to represent all the frequencies that we can hear on a computer we have to take how many points at least 40,000 points because Nyquist theorem says that not just exactly twice as many but at least twice as many so YouTube for example runs at 48 thousand points or samples we call these point a sample 48,000 samples per second in other words the sample rate of YouTube is 48 kilohertz now that we picked a finite number of samples we still have a big problem because each one of these samples can still have an infinite amount of variation in the amplitude or the loudness levels so what are we gonna do about it we're gonna decide on a certain number of loudness levels and each sample from the signal will get snapped to a loudness level that is closest to it. So if we have a point between two loudness levels, we see which loudness level is closer to it, either the upper one or the lower one, and we snap that sample to that loudness level. And that process is called quantization. If a signal gets too quiet below a certain threshold, we cannot quantize it anymore. It will get registered as silence, as if there is no signal at all. So the difference between the lowest quantizable signal, or in other words, the quietest level that we can register and the highest level that we can register, everything in between, that is called the dynamic range. And the dynamic range is represented by bits. If you ever saw the term bit depth, that's what it means. It means how many levels of loudness this signal has. One bit is roughly 6 dBFS. Now, decibels come in different flavors and they are used for different things. But what you are talking about right now, if you're recording audio into a computer, we use the dB full scale. And on a full scale, the maximum loudness level or the upper ceiling, the thing you cannot go above, is zero decibels full scale. And you can only go down from there. Now, I said one bit is roughly six decibels because it's 6.02 but even at the biggest dynamic range the difference is only gonna be like half a decibel so it's not really significant we can just say that one bit is 6 dB. Before I address the problem with Instagram there's one more very important thing you need to know and it's how to count the number of loudness levels so a bit is the smallest unit a computer can understand it can either be on or off one or zero there is there is not just two states so if a signal has a dynamic range of one bit it's gonna be either silence or full volume no in between if it's two bits then each bit can have two states what we need to do is two to the power of the number of bits so we have two bits two to the power of two is four a two-bit signal has four loudness levels four bit signal is two to the power of four 16 loudness levels an 8-bit signal has 256 loudness levels, and so on. ACD is 16 bits. Uh, streaming platforms like YouTube, Spotify, whatever, run at 24 bits. Your music software or audio recording software can run internally up to a 32-bit floating point, which is huge. It's just like a safety net. You cannot go wrong. It's so big that you cannot reach the upper limit. If you're still watching till now, I have to say congratulations, that's a lot of new information in a very short amount of time. Now that we're done with the hard part comes the 
harder part. <laughs> I'm kidding, kinda. Um, but at least now you have all the prerequisite knowledge that you need in order to understand what I'm about to explain regarding Instagram. Why am I on the rooftop, you may ask? That's a very good question. Why am I doing this to myself? Well, I'm kind of running out of angles to shoot from and if I stay in the same place, you may get bored and I don't want you to get bored because this is fun and everything I'm gonna say from now on is very important and I need your full attention so hopefully this dirty ground... Uh, I know what I'm saying. Okay, let's get back to the serious stuff. I made music, posted it to reels and noticed that it was crushed but what does that really mean? The loudest parts weren't as loud as they should be and the quietest parts weren't as quiet as they should be. Does that remind you of something? The difference between the loudest and quietest parts? The dynamic range. Instagram is reducing the dynamic range. But that's what I'm hearing. And I can't be like, well, trust me bro, I'm professional. I need something to back up my claims. So I came up with a test. Now, it sounds like I just came up with a test. It took me a while to come up with a good testing method it was not the most obvious thing. Now you might think that I can post a video to Reels, download it back from Instagram, and analyze the audio that's inside that video. That's a good idea, right? Right? Wrong. It's completely useless. I tried it, and you will not see any significant change or any significant difference in the audio because the processing or whatever is happening on Instagram is not getting baked into the video. So I needed to record the audio that's coming out of the app the same way I would listen to it as I'm using Instagram. So I hooked my phone to my console. Now I know this is overkill, I don't have a smaller interface and this console also uh, has a very low noise floor so it's not interfering with the signal, it's keeping a clean signal. And I connected the console to my laptop to record that sound. There's one more thing that I need and it's a sound. It's a piece of audio to put on Instagram. And I cannot just use music because music has too much variation and it's not a very accurate way to test things. So I made a test signal, I generated a pure tone at 1 kilohertz, 1000 hertz, and that's a very, I would say, good frequency because our ears are most sensitive to that specific range of frequencies and electronic devices can very easily reproduce that frequency it's not on either extreme of the audio spectrum and I want to have the biggest dynamic range to start with so what's the biggest dynamic range 32 bits yeah but also no because it can only run internally inside your audio software or your music software and there are no physical components that can produce anything above 24 bits and not even 24, it's like 23 point something. Even the most expensive converters, the more expensive they get, the closer to 24 bits they get, but not quite. So the biggest dynamic range right now is 24 bits. How do I make that signal? Remember I said one bit is 6 dB, and inside a computer on a full scale, the maximum, the ceiling is 0 dB. So I start from zero, I generate that signal of one kilohertz at zero dB, then I go down by one bit or six decibels. I generate another signal. I go down again by six decibels, generate another signal. And I keep going down until minus 144 decibels. Why? Because we want 24 bits and each bit is six decibels. So 24 times six is 144. So the top is zero. The bottom is minus 144. We put that on Instagram and we start from the top. As long as the interval between one loudest level and the next is six decibels, we're good, that's usable. When it starts becoming less than six decibels, that's where it starts breaking apart and it's not usable anymore because there's not enough variation in the loudness, so that's where we draw the line. So here are the results. At the louder section, it's fine as expected, but when we get to the seventh step, between step number seven and step number eight, the difference starts becoming less than six decibels, and we can keep going until the tenth step, kinda. So the dynamic range of Instagram is anywhere between 7.8 and 9.6 bits, so it's safe to say that it's just 8-bit audio. And it's funny because 8-bit is what we consider low-resolution video game music and that's the best Instagram has to offer. Here's the thing, you cannot just reduce the bit depth and expect nothing to happen. Because 
This is quantization. You are removing levels of loudness and snapping all the rest of the samples to less levels of loudness. And that causes quantization errors. In other words, quantization noise, which sounds like distortion. And we can hear exactly what that sounds like. So here's the piece of music that I made. I will forcefully reduce the bit depth to 8 bits like Instagram is doing and then I'm gonna subtract the original signal from the reduced signal and that's how the distortion sounds like. So is there a solution to that noise, to that distortion? Yes, of course there is and Instagram is not doing it. But what's the solution you may ask? It's dithering, finally. I'm gonna explain it right now with an image first visually because if you can see it you can understand it easier and pay attention because the same concept applies to audio so if you understand it now you will understand it with audio here's an image that has different levels of brightness i will call these levels the intensity of the pixels so if i reduce the dynamic range of that image to one bit it's gonna be either on or off so everything above 50% intensity will be pure white, everything below 50% intensity will be pure black. And these pixels are what we call correlated, because if one pixel has 40% intensity becomes black, all the other pixels that also have 30% intensity will become black, they behave in the same way. Now, if I introduce noise to that original image, and then I reduce it to one bit, we will retain all the variation in brightness. But how is that possible? Is it not one bit just on or off? Yeah, if you look closely, the pixels are either 100% intensity or 0% intensity. But we randomized it or we decorrelated these pixels with the noise. So now just 20% of the pixels have full intensity, which gives the perception of all the pixels having just 20% intensity or 40% of the pixels have full intensity, you get the point. We get the perception that all the variation is still there. And that is dithering. Now to audio. If I reduce the dynamic range of an audio signal, the quantization errors will create overtones that should not exist at all. They are not part of the original signal to start with. And each one of these overtones is a multiple of the fundamental frequency. And all these overtones together sound like distortion. That is very unpleasant. And if you've ever used a overdrive or distortion plugin for a guitar sound, for example, this is how it works. It takes the fundamental frequency and creates overtone frequencies that are related to that fundamentals. They are multiples of that fundamentals. So if I want to get rid of the distortion, what should I do? I should get rid of these overtones. But I cannot just filter them out because in real life you don't just have one frequency, you have a range of frequencies. And there is no way to separate the bad frequencies from the good frequencies. So what can we do? We can introduce random noise to randomize or decorrelate these overtones from the original signal. Now this might seem counterintuitive and doesn't make sense because we are putting noise to remove noise but it does make sense because the quantization noise is closely related to the original signal and changes the perception of that sound or piece of music whereas the random noise is just random so you do your thing i'll do my thing you'll just hear music and next to it a bit of random noise now here's a question for you if i reduce the dynamic range of a piece of music to just one bit so either full volume or silence, nothing in between. Can I still preserve all the perceived dynamic variation of the music? I know this is very extreme, you'll never have a one-bit music, but I just want to prove a point. One more important thing you should know before I jump into the tutorial section of the video and it's how much noise you should add. How do you know how loud the noise should be? Because although it is random noise, the loudness of it is certainly not random. So remember a bit earlier I mentioned the term noise floor and it simply means that whatever dynamic range you have, 
the noise will be at the floor or at the bottom or at the quietest part of the dynamic range. So in the case of Instagram and 8-bit audio, the noise, the quantization noise is at minus 48 dB. How do I know that? Because remember each bit is 6 dB and we have 8 bits, so 8 times 6 is 48. And that's exactly how much random noise we need to cover up the quantization noise. And if you add more random noise or louder, it's fine, it's not a problem, but it's not like the more you add, the better it gets. You just need minus 48 dB. But if you add less or quieter than minus 48 dB, we're not doing anything because the distortion from the quantization is still louder than whatever we are doing, so we are not solving any problem here. Normally, when we do dithering, we introduce the noise and then we export or render the audio at that dynamic range. So the file itself will only have, for example, 8 bits of dynamic range. But in the case of Instagram, we do not need to do that. We can export normally because Instagram will reduce it anyway. So we just need to introduce enough noise to the signal to let it self dither. And I also noticed that you are still watching until now. We are like 15 minutes in or more. You're obviously enjoying it. So you may as well hit the like button if you haven't already. Thank you. And now we're finally at the tutorial section of the video. It's gonna be split into three parts. The first part is if you have a VST signal generator plugin, I will teach you how to use it inside your video editing program, which is the most efficient way to do this whole thing. Second part is if you don't have that signal generator plugin, I'll teach you how to use Reaper, which is a free music software. It's not free, but they'll let you use it for free for as long as you want. I'll teach you how to use Reaper to generate that signal yourself and then import it into your video project file and put it in your timeline. Third part is if for whatever reason you don't want to generate the signal yourself, I'll do it for you and make it available to download. So you'll just have to drag and drop and that's it. Let's get into it. In Resolve, go to the Fairlight page. Then you're gonna right click on Empty Spot and add a new stereo track. Then click on the plus icon next to the word Effects and insert the Signal Generator plugin. Now make sure it's turned on and select White Noise then turn it down to minus 48 dB and here you go, that's your signal. Keep it on and export your video. In Premiere, go to the audio page and then go down to the audio tracks, right click and add a new track. Then go to that track and click on the little arrow at the top left to expand the effects track and then I'm gonna insert a signal generator plugin now, for whatever reason, nothing is coming out. It's not making any sound, uh, even if I play the video. Yeah, that's just how Premiere works. Resolve works like a proper audio software. Premiere is like, deal with it. Okay, so if I put any clip on that track, the signal generator plugin will start working suddenly, and that clip will be bypassed. Regardless if the plugin is making any noise or not, as long as it's active, as it's on, it will bypass all the clips on the track. And for Final Cut Pro, I don't use it, but it should be the same process as I showed you in Resolve and Premiere. Open Reaper, and the first thing you're gonna do is go to File, Project Settings, Project Settings, and make sure Project Sample Rate is checked. Then select the sample rate the same as your video project file. To check the sample rate in Resolve, go to this gear icon in the bottom right corner, then go to the Fairlight tab, and right here, that's the sample rate of the sequence, or of your video. In Premiere, you go to Sequence, Sequence Settings, and here is the sample rate. And for Final Cut Pro, I don't use it, but it should be in the Project Settings or the Sequence Settings. Select the sample rate the same as your video project file. This is very important. Then go to media and select the wave bit depth as you can go as far as 32 bit floating point, but that's unnecessary because 24 bit is more than enough. And then click OK. Then you're going to double click in an empty area to make a new track. Then click on effects and type white and double click on the white noise generator. And now make sure it's minus 48 dB. 
then put the cursor at the start of the timeline and hold control or command and drag however long you need your video to be and then right click and apply track or take effects to item as a new take. Now you can turn off the noise generator and this is the noise rendered on a clip. You're gonna go to file. Oh, before going to file, make sure to make a full selection of the clip. Then go to file and render. Render master mix and bounds are time selection. Then choose the directory. I will put it on my desktop. I'll call it noise for reels. And make sure that the sample rate is the same as the project sample rate and the bit depth is the same as the project bit depth. Okay, and the format is WAV because it's lossless. You don't lose any information. The file doesn't get compressed. And finally, just click render one file. And it's done. Close it. Now, if I go to the desktop and open, that's the noise. And all you gotta do right now is import the noise audio file into your project, put it in your timeline, and that's it. Just export the video and your problem is solved. Finally, I made two versions of that noise, one at a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz, the other at 48 kilohertz. So whatever you're using, you have what you need. I'll put a link to my Google Drive in the description. You can download these and drag them and drop them into your timeline and you're fine. Also, if this video sparked your interest to learn more about audio, I found a playlist on YouTube that has pretty much all the fundamentals of audio and it's very well explained. So I highly encourage you to watch it if that's something you're into. Otherwise, I have some epic orchestral covers I made uh, and all of them are of popular songs. You can click here uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully it will take less time than this. This video took forever to finish. I'm like, I'm, wow, yeah. And um, my arm get, got tired.